So when you walked through here the first time, what was your reaction? Just that these are the most elite athletes in the world, and it's crazy that this is how they're trained. At the time of our 2014 interview, Bodie Miller's ski career was slowing down, and he was making plans to purchase property and enter the world of horse racing. We caught up with him three years later at his Northeast Maryland barn to talk about the revolutionary changes he hopes to make as a horse owner. All right, so explain what this is. This is the treadmill. It's a Equa Gym high-speed treadmill. The idea is that we could have in a much more controlled environment for, for testing fitness. This will go about 60 miles an hour. Um, so you can go much faster than a horse can run. You know, like, what's the fastest you've taken this with the horses here? 40 miles an hour is kind of a standard race speed. It's about as fast as horses go. And the idea there is if you had a horse that was having trouble going fast, we have them all the time. People just say, oh, they're just a slow horse. You might as well sell them. But the reality is they've done it with people where you could be a slow runner, they put you on an Alter G treadmill, take a little weight off you, run you over speed, and then over the course of a few weeks, add the weight back on, and all of a sudden you're a faster runner. It becomes more about fitness. This is the hyperbaric chamber, and this is probably the biggest difference between my operation and my barn than everyone else. I, I felt like was a critical piece to, to being able to win races at an elite level. Why? All horses bleed when they run. The compression in their lungs is really high. There's huge um, pressure differential between their lungs and the capillaries around their lungs. So they give themselves like an internal hickey in their lungs and suck blood from their capillaries into their lungs. The idea is hyperoxygenate their system and they build a whole bunch more blood. So they build new capillaries, new blood vessels, and healing that in a way that doesn't cause scar tissue, lets them be ready to run again quickly. You can see I have all my, my um, air filtration system, the BioOx system. So there's a formula you put in here uh, called BioOx. They're charged and then there's a fan and it circulates water and it creates a magnetic field around it and pulls in all particulate matter. So it'll pull mold off the walls, it'll pull dust from everywhere, pulls in bugs and all kinds of different things. And that's all the black you see in here is all bad stuff. How did you get the idea to put it in Just common in sense, I mean, breathing. Are they common? In no, the... nobody else has them. I mean, horses have breathing. One of the, the biggest challenges is, is upper respiratory infection and, and uh, disease. This reduces that incredibly. These are the, the paddocks. So that's where you take the horses so they can run around. Yeah, and you, you let them have outdoor time. It's good for their mind and, and they get a little physical activity. They, there's a lot of like small muscles and ligaments in their ankles and, and legs that need lateral movement. And they don't really get that when you just walk them up to the track and run them around. Hey buddy. And this big boy, he's a little bit on the sassier side. I get along with him, but he's a three-year-old now. So when you say this one is sassy, like he's what got does a little bit mean? more. He's a he's a boy. Um, we we gelded him, which took some of that away. Part of the reason we gelded him was because he had a pretty pretty bad attitude. Um, I think his honestly, I think his nuts were hurting him when he ran too. He had huge nuts and they were banging around <laughs> back there, and I think that hurt him. But but um, but some of it is also just his his attitude, his personality. He was he was a little bit too too much like a young boy. He was okay. just pissed off all the time and wanted yeah. to beat people up. And that's why he tries to bite me and not you. In what way, Chuck, have you seen uh, Bodie's uh, successful ski career come into play with the horse training? Well, I think with the, the feeding program, we've really ramped up the feeding program and his take on, on the um, lactic acid and trying to combat that and the training, uh, doing a little more with the individual and we'll try to implement um, out back in the treadmill and it's I can see the muscles on the horses are changing we get more really? muscle, muscle in their loin and their hind end. How does that differ from other programs you worked yeah. with before? Well a lot of people just um, uh, buy the feed put it in the and, and don't have a nutritionist coming in giving you advice we're lucky and one one aspect that Bodie's willing to put up the money to buy the best hay, the best feed, and also have a nutritionist to advise us. Yeah, information is becoming more accessible in this sport uh, everywhere. I mean, uh, there's there's an inevitable way that information creeps into a you know a sport, and that was one of the goals I had when I when I started this was to try to make it better. You know, of all the things, I want to have success, I want to win races, but I want to try to have a positive impact on the sport.
We were just obviously at your Northeast Maryland barn yeah. yesterday, and then you come here today, and significant difference. Yeah, and the, the basics, like I was talking about, hay net, this is how the horses eat. They, they're all fed really low ceiling, not a lot of airflow, blocked off, you know, real dusty. Um, and you can feel it in terms yeah, of the, yes. it's the smell and the, it's it's much darker horses don't like the dark that much The feel of this is what I, I thought that we could really improve on that part I'm really not sure if it's going to improve the racing capacity But for me those little things are, are pretty obvious when you see that, that Bob is you know He's arguably the best trainer in, in the world and this is this is how he does it You know and this is the environment that that he puts the horses in right. but again you can't argue with the results So when you walked through here the first time what was your reaction? Just that these are the most elite athletes in the world, and it's crazy that this is how they're trained. You know, this is how they this is how they live. They they're in their stall 23 and a half hours a day. They walk out. They'll walk around that ring out there for 10 minutes, maybe, maybe less. Get on, walk on a dirt path over to the track, run once around the track, walk back and back in the stall. And that's their that's their whole existence while they're here. To me, that that seemed seemed wrong. It seemed like there was more that you could do. It's just, you know, he, he's limited by what the facility offers. At Fair Hill, you know, first thing in the morning, we let the horses out in their, in their turnout paddocks. They go out in the round pen, they roll around in the sand, they go out in the paddock and, and run around on grass and play and jump around. And as you saw, we take them out back into the big fields, you know, several thousand acres of, of grass and trails and woods and fields and let them, uh, let them be outside. Bob has amazing depth in his stable too. Just really, you know, a lot of these, every horse you see in his in his stable, the reason they're here is because they're that good. If they're not that good, he gets rid of them pretty quick. Whatever he's doing here is successful, and I've been on, I've been in his ear for 15 years telling him what he should be changing, and he always kind of laughs it off. And you know, I think he does integrate some of the ideas I have, but he, he his argument is I, I win all the big races. You you can't you know you can't deny that, but it's also. Um, even you know he uh, he buys very good horses. And he's a great horseman, mm -hmm. but I think there's a lot that he could do with even this program that would really sort of move move the needle forward.